Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the first Hilaron. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. This evening's first psalm is Psalm 59. Rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Rescue me from evildoers. And save me from those who thirst for my blood. See how they lie in wait for my life, how the mighty gather together against me not for any offense or fault of mine, O Lord, not because of any guilt of mine. They run and prepare themselves for battle. Rouse yourself, come to my side and see. For you, Lord God of hosts, are Israel's God. Awake and punish all the ungodly. Show no mercy to those who are faithless and evil. They go to and fro in the evening. They snarl like dogs and run about the city. Behold, they boast with their mouths and taunts are on their lips. For who, they say, will hear us? But you, O Lord, you laugh at them. You laugh all the ungodly to scorn. My eyes are fixed on you, O my strength. For you, O God, are my stronghold. My merciful God comes to meet me. God will let me look in triumph on my enemies. Slay them, O God, lest my people forget. Send them reeling by your might and put them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sins of their mouths, for the words of their lips, for the cursing and lies that they utter, let them be caught in their pride. Make an end of them in your wrath. Make an end of them, and they shall be no more. Let everyone know that God rules in Jacob and to the ends of the earth. They go to and fro in the evenings. They snarl like dogs and run about the city. They forage for food 
and if they are not filled, they howl. For my part, I will sing of your strength. I will celebrate your love in the morning, for you have become my stronghold, a refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, will I sing. For you, O oh God, are my stronghold and my merciful God. And let us continue with Psalm 60. O God, you have cast us off and broken us. You have been angry. O oh, take us back to you again. You have shaken the earth and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it totters. You have made your people no hardship. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you to be a refuge from the power of the bow. Save us by your right hand and answer us, that those who are dear to you may be delivered. God spoke from his holy place and said, I will exalt and parcel out Shechem. I will divide the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet and Judah my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. On Edom I throw down my sandal to claim it. And over Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? You no longer go out, O God, with our armies. Grant us your help against the enemy. For vain is the help of man. With God we will do valiant deeds. And he shall tread our enemies underfoot. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. As Jesus went away from there, the scribes and Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak of many things, lying in wait for him, to catch at something he might say. In the meantime, when so many thousands of the multitude had gathered together that they trod upon one another, he began to say to his disciples, first, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear that those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do, but I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Why, even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious how or what you are to answer or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Here ends the lesson. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 
what more needs to be said? We as humans are addicted to hypocrisy, to the idea of doing as I say, not as I do, to telling others how the world should be run, to pointing out their faults, and to completely ignoring our own. What a terrifying thought that all of this, the truth of our actions, the truth of our thoughts, the truth of who we are, will all be revealed in the light. How do we go about avoiding hypocrisy? How is it that we can actually take Christ at his word and commit ourselves to not being hypocrites? What a huge task, what a high bar. It's so easy to forgive ourselves for dumb things we say and yet be critical of other people for dumb things they say. It's easy to forgive ourselves for being weak, for eating too much, for indulging in various ways, and then judge others who indulge in various ways or eat too much or do whatever it is. How do we actually stop indulging in the leaven of the Pharisees and give up on hypocrisy? One early saint of the church said that the key to this, there's kind of one thing you can do. There's one thing that you can acquire which actually stops you from being a hypocrite. And this is this incredible gift called humility. Humility, he said, is the mortar which holds the stones which are all the virtues in the floor of the building. And humility is the crown upon the top of the building. Humility is the kind of beginning of our quest to be faithful to God, and humility is the goal of our quest, being faithful to God. So what is it to be humble? <clears throat> humility is not saying, um, oh, I'm really not very good at chess, when in fact you're like a ranked grandmaster or something like that. Humility is being proud of your achievements, excited by your achievements, happy about your achievements, in exactly the same way that you're proud at, uh, about the achievements of someone else and happy about the achievements of someone else. It is taking delight and joy in the gifts that God has given you, not as your attributes that are so great, but as these amazing gifts from God, just in the way that you would take delight in someone else's gifts. Humility is not um, pretending that you are foolish or unintelligent or or denying any of the characteristics that you have, instead they're delighting in the intelligence and the wisdom of everyone around you. So the world assumes that every person exists on this kind of hierarchical ladder. There are smarter people and less smart people. There are more powerful people and less powerful people. There are richer people and poorer people. There are people who went to really impressive universities and people who didn't go to very impressive universities or no university at all. And humility is taking that whole ladder and tossing it out the window. It's this idea that there is one thing that makes you impressive. There is one thing that makes you important. There is one qualification that's the only qualification that matters. And that qualification is being made in the image and likeness of God. So every single one of us, every single human being, is made in the image of God. And God loves each one of us infinitely. So to the source of all power, to the source of all wisdom, to the source of all knowledge, to the ruler and master of the universe, I am infinitely important. But so are you. So is the homeless person on the corner, so is the bank president, so is everybody. So true humility is taking my belief in my importance and really ratcheting that up to an infinite level, that I am infinitely important because I'm so important to God, but then also recognizing that every single person on the face of the earth is also infinitely important to God. So living in this way that recognizes that how God sees us, what God thinks about us, the fact that God cares about us, is the only thing that matters. That is true humility. And so if you're looking at yourself as an infinitely important child of God, and every other human being as an infinitely important child of God, there is no room for these comparisons. There is no room to judge people's dumb thoughts or dumb statements or anything that they've done, because none of that actually matters. What matters 
is how God sees each one of us. So, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and acquire the gift of humility. And let us say together the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time, I would invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving.
I pray for Constance Shadwick, for Jan Heritz von der Ninde, for Jean von Hollerich, for Drew Atherton, for Nancy Gaines, for Stanley Sohaski, for Melissa, for Dana Zink, for Adolf, for Howard McKinney Jr., for Celia Bazemore, for Judy Murphy, for Jenny Herbert and the Herbert family, for Jay Silveris, for Ralph Weimer, for Kevin Ross and the Ross family, for David Newton. And I pray for the repose of the soul of Phyllis Ross, Sister Anne Marie, Veda Webster, Carl Bazemore, Ralph Lucas, and the Right Reverend William Fry. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us say together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. God bless you and have a good evening.